What if I told you that this entire garden can water itself while I'm sleeping? That's exactly what I just set up here. So at 4 a.m., the overhead sprinklers in high tunnel number one go off for 10 minutes. The overhead irrigation in tunnel number two goes off. And then immediately after that, tunnel number three. Then all three tunnels also have drip irrigation set up and each tunnel can be controlled independently with either the overhead or the drip irrigation. So I control it all through an app on my phone through Wi-Fi and or Bluetooth from these Wi-Fi controlled timers. And in this video, I'm gonna show you step by step how I set up this Wi-Fi controlled timer, and I have four of them running off the same app, set up to the drip irrigation and the overhead irrigation in all these high tunnels, including these few beds behind me, and it's all 100% completely automated. Yo, 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 what up, gromies? Welcome back to Chef's Harvest Farm. If you're new here, I'm Chef Mikey. I'm a former executive chef turned urban farmer and when I started gardening I knew nothing about setting up irrigation I just started with one of those kits that you can buy from drip depot and it comes with everything you need to set it up to a hose spigot on your house last fall I had water lines installed into the garden so I got a water hookup on each side of the garden so in the past I've always used like these dial timers and like I could never tell if they're actually like set right you got to turn this dial to of the day and toggle through buttons and switches to set the time and I never really knew if it was even timed right and then these timers are notorious for just not going off all right so I got all my supplies that I need here my buggy I got like these crates filled with uh, all the irrigation supplies I could possibly need and just kind of figure it out as I go that's how I roll you know there's no real plan I am gonna use plumbers tape so because I'm gonna set up two of these timers so that I can get my eight outlets right I can't plug it in here so I got me one of these things so I can plug one in on this side and one in on that side so I'm gonna put plumbers tape on this first just it makes sure it doesn't drip so a lot of these things have gaskets which uh, it's supposed to make it so they don't drip but a lot of time those gaskets fail if I don't put the plumbers tape on you know you do the whole project you get everything put together and then you turn it on and it's like ah oh, man it's leaking I've kind of learned to just go ahead and do it I bought this thing at Home Depot or Lowe's I guess I go to Lowe's because they have my tax exemption on file and I never pay sales tax for anything that I buy at Lowe's and then I always make sure that I'm tracking everything that I buy too so all this stuff is tax deductible so all I do is I go to Lowe's I make my purchase I have that receipt emailed to me and I take a paper receipt too I take a picture of it automatically files it for schedule F taxes with my farm raise app on my phone so everything gets automatically filed appropriately unlike QuickBooks you know I could never figure out how to file things for schedule F it was a nightmare so if you want to sign up for farm raise you can go to farmraise.com and use code chef m20 and get 20% off your farm raise subscription now I don't put it on too tight because then you can like break that gasket and bend it so I've made that uh, mistake before all right, we got water coming out. Now let's see if it can hold the water pressure. Okay, pretty good. So no drip or nothing, right? So I always wanna like test it before I move on because then if this ain't watertight, then it's a pain in the butt to take this off if you've got all the timers and everything else hooked on to it, right? So you wanna check your leakage after you do every connection if possible. I got my plumber's tape on these to make sure I get a good fit. And if I don't use the plumber's tape, they typically drip. You know what I mean? You can't tighten this too tight. It's all like cheap Chinese made plastic. You gotta be careful with these connections, right? So I just hand tighten that the best I can. Not like too crazy. I'm pretty strong, you know? So sometimes like even hand tightening for me, I can break stuff. So that's a hose fitting, right? So there's pipe thread and hose thread. They look exactly the same, but they're very different. So when you're purchasing these fittings, you need to make sure you're purchasing the right ones for your context. So these are all hose thread connections. So I bought hose thread fittings to permalock fit 
fittings and it's all three quarter inch and so then i'm just going to put this in here elbow it into our trench and then hook it up to the line i already have over there and then we'll flush the line out all right so i'm just running the water out of the line real quick and i can control it from my phone here so i'm just making sure there's no dirt in the lines i just put the timer on for one minute i'm going to try to rinse out this connection too you know just to make sure there's no dirt try not to do that you don't want to kink the lines okay that's pretty good so i can turn it off on my phone let's see and then it stops so that's super cool right like you don't got to run over there turn the water off and then i'm gonna plug it in and then i'm just gonna staple it down right here just to keep every so i, I stapled the whole pipe in place just to keep everything nice and neat while I'm working, you know. Uh, I'll just leave the staples in probably when I bury it, you know. That way if we ever need to dig them up to work, everything's going to be nice, separate, and neat. That's pretty good. I'm going to go and test the sprinklers now because if there's any problems, I want to fix it now, right? I don't want to do the rest of the work to find out they all have problems and all have to get redone, you know. So, like, this is the overhead line for this tunnel, right? Comes in right here, elbows off, and up into there. And then this line elbows off and this is the drip lines for this tunnel this one elbows off into the drip lines for this tunnel and then this one is the overhead irrigation for this tunnel so now all four of these are set up independently on that timer and they'll go off on their own so i'll show you how i uh, set it up over at the timer all right so you can see how i just kind of repeat the same steps on all these lines just took them right to the lines that were already there so i just hooked them up to the timers now so they're all set up independently and these white connections are the drip lines and so they're pressure reducers you can't run full pressure through the drip lines or it'll like blow the end pieces off the end you know the water pressure will be too tight and these connections can't hold that type of pressure so it'll just like blow one of these apart and you'll just be spraying water all over the place and not irrigating your crops and so i just dug a trench like over to the tie tunnel number three i got a separate timer hooked up over here and then this is my hose thread fitting to permalock so then i'm going to screw that on to my pressure reducer like so okay and now I can this goes to my permalock so now I can plug the hose into this and this is just gonna uh, screw right onto my timer all right y'all so I've brought my next line this one's my drip line right and this is the drip line header that's already here but I'm not like super happy with the way these are set up. When this was installed, it was just kind of a half-assed job to begin with. We just planted this high tunnel. It was completely empty this morning and we planted the whole thing to lettuce. Show you how we're gonna set up all the drip lines in here. The trench is right here, right? We'll fill this in and our overhead will be done. And then right here, like I've got a drip line header coming in. You can see here, right? It's kind of been here for a long time. I'm going to pull this whole thing up, disconnect it, take all these parts out, lay a fresh line down and reinstall all these and then put the drip lines in here. Come on, let's go find us a pipe that we can uh, replace this one with. I'll show you the drip line graveyard over here where I've been pulling all these scraps from. I haven't had to spend a single dollar to send, set any of this up. So this is where I've just been like piling all my drip lines and extra irrigation parts on this landscape fabric down here. So this is where I've just been pulling all my parts from for this project. Ugh, so I'm just going to find me a new piece of header that's like pretty nice, doesn't have any holes in it. And we'll take it up there and make a new header for that high tunnel. And we're going to redo all the high tunnels, I think, because they're all kind of not super well set up. Cool. Looks like a good piece. Let's go set it up. Okay, so I just kind of like staged my drip line header right here and I'm, I do it on the outside of the high tunnel on purpose and I've left the states in there. I'll show you in a second. And that's kind of like so that um, you see if they, when they go across as opposed to like on the inside here, this one's on the inside of this. But like I find that because you'll end up pulling on the drip lines, right? So if you don't have something to hold it in place, you're just going to pull the whole header forward. So it's going to bend inwards or like move, you know, so you want to stabilize it the best you can. So this is my drip line coming in. It's buried here. I guess 
like it's kind of flexible so i got an elbow here i guess i'm just gonna elbow into this and then just bury the whole thing and it'll just come out of the ground right here i think that's my best bet so i'm just gonna go under that pipe it just kind of makes a little bit more sense and that's gonna kind of hold it down and then i can go into my header right here okay so this is my drip line header now see and i didn't staple it in on that end so it's moving i'm gonna go staple it in and come back okay so I just uh, put a landscape pin in on that end. Now I can just kind of pull this and make sure it's like kind of snug. You know, you don't want to pull it like super hard or nothing. Okay, so now this is my end, right? And so now since we got the Wi-Fi controller, I can control it from my phone. So I'm just gonna test the line. So I'll show you how we do this, just like that. So just flush the line out, make sure there's no dirt in there. Clean off my connection here. Make sure that's good to go. I've got a gasket in it. And now I don't want to push this on when it's doing this because there's nowhere for the water to go. It'll build up pressure and it'll just pop this off, you know? You gotta wait till it stops. And there you go. One minute timer and it turns itself off. And then I just screw this on. And then if I ever need to flush this out again, then I could just pull that off and flush it out. Uh, and then I got a landscape pin right here. So I'm just gonna put that in right on the corner of this high tunnel just to hold that line in place. And I put one on the other side too. I just like recycled these. Uh, I pulled them out, they were super dirty because they've been buried. So I, I went and washed them off. You always wanna make sure you keep all your connections clean. You don't wanna be throwing dirty connections back into my bin. So I've got these stakes here, you see? And how I just said, you wanna put them in front of the pipe so when you pull this. So I'm gonna reinstall these, leave the stakes in. So as I install the drip lines, this kind of holds them in place. And we're gonna remove the stakes afterwards, but we're gonna landscape pin all of these in place when we're done, right? To make sure everything stays here but i don't want to do that first because i need to I, I need this to be able to like move so that i can install these i've got this hole punch and this hole punch punches holes in the mainline tubing and then this end just sticks right in so i'm going to line them up so that i can put a drip line in between every row of lettuce and i'll leave links in the description for the tool all these connections, everything that I use in the video, check the description if you want to pick this stuff up. All right, and then pretty straightforward. These will just plug in here. And all my drip lines are exactly the same size. So I got all these drip lines just laying around because it's been winter, but like I don't have to go search for the right ones because all my garden beds are the same size. So all my drip lines are the same size. That's always super important to me. Uh, before when I was gardening, I had different size everything everywhere. And I'd like run around looking for the right pieces and it's just a waste of time you know make everything the same size and you will like your life a lot better okay and see now i can uh, go to the other end and i can pull them snug and this keeps it from like scooting forward you understand all right so next step i'm just gonna uh drain out all these lines and make sure that the connectors are good so i'm gonna run the water through Make sure I clean out any dirt that might be in there. And then I'll reinstall these. On the ends of all these drip lines, I've got different connectors. I've just collected all kinds of different ones over the years. So like these are the three different types that I have. So this is like the best one and it's kind of heavy duty. The lock fitting is super tight, works well. And then you could just unscrew this. It has a gasket in there to make sure it doesn't leak. And then you can just flush out the line super easy like that. So these are my favorite. And this is like what I started with because it came with a kit. But then they're super expensive. These are like $3 each or something like that. And I'll leave a link in the description. I'll label these as the best. Then this is like the economy line. So like these just kind of go in the same way and then this just kind of unscrews and comes off you know so you have to actually disassemble the whole thing to drain out the line and these are cheaper they're like a dollar each you know so these are like pretty good too but then these are just like clips so you can like just fold the end of the line so it just like folds like this and then this just pinches on 
like that and that's how you stop the end and so these are like 25 cents each so i basically just went to these as i started to expand and everything costs more money right like once you start setting up a hundred drip lines and you need a hundred of these on the ends and they cost four dollars each or whatever they cost you know it's like 400 bucks just for these things you know as opposed to these are 25 cents so you get the same amount of drip lines for a hundred bucks you know what i mean it's up to you these are definitely the best and these are definitely the cheapest i'll leave links in the description if you want to check them out at all all right so i'm going to take all these off and then i'm just going to hit the button on my phone it should work and the wi-fi controller should drain all these lines right out and clean out the dirt all right so so you can see uh we got a leak right here and i got another leaky one over there so I got these little pieces, they're just couplings. I'll leave a link in the description. It's the same thing, there's good ones and crappy ones. I go for the good ones personally. So I'm just gonna cut out that drip emitter and put this right there and that'll fix our leak. All right, so now I'm just gonna staple it in real good where I pull on it, see what I mean? How it goes inwards, you're gonna pull it back out. So I just, I'm gonna staple, I'm just gonna staple crap out of it with these landscape pins and that'll help keep it in place. It's super annoying when that happens. So first I'll put this uh, valve in and I'm just gonna put it like right here next to the corner of the high tunnel. So anybody can just come over here and switch that valve right off if we don't wanna water in here, but we still wanna water those beds or vice versa. And that's it. And then just like that, now I got a valve installed here and I can turn, I can control that, the drip off and on as needed. And I'm honestly just gonna leave it off for now because I'm just watering with the overhead irrigation in here right now until we get the tomatoes in there. So I decided I'm just gonna replace this connection with a T instead of the elbow. That way I can keep my elbow for a different project. And then I can just T off this right into these lines right here. And then I'll install this valve right here. So then I can have complete control over these beds. I could just shut them all off with one switch, you know, rather than hit every single one. My goal will be to plant right next to the drip line. So each row has its own drip line right next to it. But then like this bed has four rows of carrots on it. So that'll be nice and easy. I'll just see if I can sneak the drip line right in under uh, those rows of carrots, kind of pull them back and sneak it in there. That'll be good. Uh, so I just need to kind of eyeball this the best I can, keeping in mind that I'll, it'll typically be four rows of lettuce. And that's all you can do sometimes is the best you can do, you know? right and so i'm always visualizing i need my paper pot transplanter to fit in between that and be able to plant a bed of lettuce right here about six inch spacing boom ah there we go That's the best i got now we'll hook up these carrots i got one other bed over here all right, y'all, so my last steps, I'm just gonna go ahead and rake all the wood chips back over these lines and bury them in the ground. And that's about all I got for you today. I hope you found value in this video. I appreciate y'all being here and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks, y'all.